on Thursday, July the 2nd, 1992, the Galway Advertiser had a front page story headlined, Clear the Streets. In it, a group of Galway business people called for a ban on drinking in the streets to combat what they said was the destruction of Galway by winos, crusties and so-called dropouts. As a result of this complaint, Galway Corporation removed stone seats which had been in place in Cross Street for 18 months. These were seen as a congregation point for winos and their removal was an attempt to deal with the problem so-called vagrants were said to have been causing shopkeepers and their customers. On July the 9th, the Galway Observer reported that the Galway city traders had called for radical measures to outlaw drinking in the streets of Galway completely and also to control busking by registration. Idea, is it to take them out? Yeah. I'll say it's the people complaining. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like. Or was it the corporation? I mean, is this corporation work? Are you working yeah. for the corporation? Yeah. yeah. Who are you? I'm working for an independent filmmaker. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're making a film about the changing scene of Galway. Oh, okay. What do you think? What were the complaints about, do you think? Uh, the the winers were used to me. Yeah. That was it. They, were, they weren't moving. Though. Yeah. What do you think yourself about? Well, we are the This is the story as printed in the Galway Advertiser on July the 2nd, entitled Clear the Streets. At this stage, the seats had been removed. A local trader says, we are now paying the price for welcoming everybody into our city for the last few years. If something is not done soon, the place will be destroyed. He also said, we want street drinking banned. The winos are sending crusties into off licenses to get drink for them and having it on the street. We want people who are drunk to be removed. We want begging outlawed, action to be taken on exposure and public urinating, and we want congregations of rowdy individuals to be stopped. The same week, the first of the articles appeared in the City Tribune, in which a picture of a found syringe is placed beside the caption move to ban drinking on the streets to curb city centre vagrancy. We still fail to see the connection implied between syringes and so-called vagrancy. Why? Cheers anyway. Up here for thinking. Yeah, all what right, about brother. the air? What about the air up there? Oh, no. Water. You can go up there sometime. Oh, can I fit the drums? Oh, you can. Yo, mates. Oh. Are you late? Okay. For you. So don't, for you. Don't go too hard in it. That's no. all. For you. For that. Okay. Do you want it then? All right. Do you want it then? <laughs> Come on, baby. Don't let that go, baby. Little legends riding in. Do you want it then? Do you want the dad to hold it in back? Come on, baby, don't let that go, baby. Do you want the dad? 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 Do you want the dad to hold it in back? Come on, baby, don't let that go, baby. Do you want to eat that? Wait, Mike. You're, you're the owner here of the Hungry Grass. Yeah. Right. I'm delighted. I'm oh, delighted they're gone, you know? Yeah. What, what did it mean to you, all these seats? Well, I mean, it was grief. Go on, why? 
Why? Because we had about half a dozen winos here every day of the week. And what were they doing? I they were drinking and tapping up, hustling the customers. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's not pleasant, you know? Yeah. It wasn't pleasant. And they're gone now, and I feel I'm happier that gone, you know? Yeah. And now if they come and fix it up now and straighten it out, at least then it's open again to the public and yeah. we're not going to have... Do you, think it, do you think it's going to stop the windows coming down here? I mean, no, well, it mean, it may be not stop them coming down, but it, it'll stop them uh, sitting, mm -hmm. you know? I did get it together there after a bit, then. So, I mean, there was no, like, negative hassle? Or no, no, there was no violence or anything like that, you no. know? Right. Unless there, there was a couple of times of violence here, but it was between themselves, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Right. Over drink. Stuff like right. that, you know? Right. from not the grand, you know? Yeah. yeah. But it's the hustling. Yeah. When you hustle people, then they get a negative vibe off you. Yeah. They don't want to be here. Yeah. They don't want to be hustled, so they're not going to come again. So everyone else sits around there, like, the people yeah. order pub come up and sit down there. Yeah. We sit down there. What's, we're all fucking Galwegians, like, That's right. Yeah. We're all Galwegians, so we're not entitled to sit down there. Who is, like, Did so we strangers come and sit down. So That's what? Right. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we can't sit down, like. Yeah. Did we ever do anything out of the way, Mike? Never. Yeah. You ever done that? Well, you never nice did. Nice and polite and practical people. That's right. That's true. Do you drink in nothing? Not at all. Do you drink in nothing? Are you one of the bar I cowboys? I think that one was all that. Yeah, yeah. The old time, like. Yeah. No, there's right. a... Police there. Police. Sure, police. Get a shot of the police. Get a shot of the police. police. Yeah. It's all right. Dive in there. Another city trader asked whether it would now be necessary to remove every park bench in the city and called on the Garthi Chamber of Commerce, the Vintners, the Tourist Board and Corporation to band together in an all-out attempt to clean up Galway City. Yeah. No, what he's saying is that um, strangers can beg and the guards won't bother them. Yeah. But if locals, the old Shanstock beg, they get hassle. Is that what you're saying? It's not at all. Friends of yours, have you yourself been put away for... I have got locked in the house. For what? Just put on my head, just asking a few honest pins. Asking for a few honest pins? Yeah. You were actually sentenced to, to locked in house for... I've been the Mount Dive off now, locked in the house. Big it. I'm one for nothing. King of nothing, well. You were doing nothing more than asking for nothing. Big it. Well, a friend of my own, I knew. Thanks for spilling the supper drink. It's absurd, isn't it? So where are we going to sit? We'll have to sit in the goddamn sand, won't we? Which is better, <laughs> anyway. Yep. <laughs> Holly, would you describe yourself as a vagrant? No. no. Were you ever a vagrant? No. When you came to Galway first, you were a vagrant. Come on. <laughs> Will you get rid of the camera, please? No, you're a perfect example of a good-looking vagrant now. We need positive press. No, I'm not a good-looking vagrant. Get the camera. So we decided to answer the street traders' allegations and wrote a letter to the Galway Advertiser, which was printed on July the 2nd. Part of what we said in this letter was, people do cause trouble now and again, but that is in the nature of things. If the people who are complaining about us know anything at all about compassion, we would not complain. It is very easy to say a person is not a person, and so said the Nazis. It is also ironic to find that newcomers come and complain about the apparent lack of hygiene of the so-called vagrants, when they themselves are responsible for flushing down untold amounts of raw sewage into the Korob River each day. What do you think? I think it's horrible because I found it really nice that they were sitting on it. Maybe they, I was wondering, maybe they did because there were so many people sitting on it who were not allowed to go in the bars. That and if that's the reason, I, fi I find it really, really awkward. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I like this place. Yeah. And I thought maybe when they go to put tables and, and chairs outside, then it's okay. But when they're not doing it, I don't know why they're doing it. Then it's, I think, trying to get this place proper and clean. Well, fuck them. That's where I fell in love when stars above. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Pressure in the brain. What pressure? Well, they called me the old living legend. The gypsy? The gypsy. How many power? The gypsy. A living legend. I'll prove it. Tommy, Tommy. I mean, do you feel that you're in need of a house or in need of somewhere to stay? Accommodation. A roof over your head when you feel like it. Put it this way. All I want is a room somewhere far away from the cool, clear air. Just somewhere to come back. Somewhere to come back, man. Somewhere to put your head down. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's all that matters. And have a drink. Have a drink and kick up a bit of a racket. I'm going to sleep in that. We know you're bad because you're a fucking drunk. This is the Fair Green Hostel for Homeless Men, run by Galway Social Services. He's bad, isn't he? He is. Severely bad. Because you're an asshole. All right, hold yourself. I'll think so. Because you don't behave yourself. This is it. This is why you're bad. Well. Bad because of one reason and one reason only. Because you're an asshole. Because I'm a fucking drunkard in this way. Really? I thought this place was open for drunkards. I don't think so. And your morals has changed. I'm bad because of one reason of what I am. Yeah, but tell me often you get violent, you know. I've seen you at it. Because there's good reasons behind everything, you know. All right. And there's bad reasons behind everything, too. That's right. But I was refused food here one day. Myself and my daughter and my granddaughter. I don't know what goes on. I mean, I, I don't... Listen, now. it's not the staff. Thanks. It's for nothing. We we'll go and see where he lives, yeah? Let's go and see where you live since they uh, evicted you. Let's go and see where you live. And they haven't treated you too badly. They gave you about 680 blankets, 70,000 sleeping bags, and you're still not satisfied. So it's your fault, isn't it? It's not really my fault. It's not really his fault. Yes, it's a new one. Tommy has been living here for almost a year. 
He is barred from the nearby shelter and he does not have anywhere else to live. A born and bred Romani gypsy, Tommy is one of the main targets of the current campaign against so-called vagrants and others. However, he is a genuine vagrant, living and sleeping on the streets for over 20 years now. He left a thriving business back in Cork and went on the roads. Tommy feels that despite his faults, he is entitled to reasonable shelter. As he says himself, I sleep and I rise with the birds. If you get him a proper combination, look, I'm, I'm a Galway, you know, born and reared in this town. You know, I kind of get a flat. Because I make no, because I drink on the street. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all right if you have a place to go home every night, to lie down and to be looked after where you haven't and you have to go down that street. I was often up here at four or five in the night time, just standing around. No. And nowhere to go? Nowhere to go, yes. Do you, do you Excuse me, young lady. Take away that camera for now, me, or I give the key. I want you I want to you tell you the people me. of Galway and of Ireland, and do put it on television. That they should be ashamed of themselves to have men sleeping out night after night. They refuse them to get a night's lodging. And they should be ashamed. So, what I want you to talk about is. Yeah, one. When you and the lads were sleeping in the shed, shed sleeping out, there, out yeah. sleeping out low. Yeah. What happened there? I have a good bear to our own. The seas are at the What, we're sleeping where? When you were sleeping out near the Santa Palace, what happened? Oh, what happened, yes. Yeah. I said that's Smitty. Yeah. But he's not around. Dead, so is about it? It, yeah, he's dead. So, where he acted? And we talked to the cooking, the homeless. That's right. Yeah. You did. You went yeah. on RTE, didn't you? Yeah, RTE, and talked yeah. for the homeless, didn't you? Yeah, and I stood sleeping. And you were the one who was responsible for the fair green being open, oh, isn't it? That's right. right. And I stood turned from the door. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what do you think, Dennis, is going to become of all this shit, you know? I think, in my knowledge, yeah. in my own knowledge, in my yes. own brain, if yes. I have anything left, yes. I think this will get a place out in Hillside. Out in Hillside? Yeah. Get them back, uh, but it's all for one man. Yeah, but Hillside is under siege as well. I mean, but the goddamn the... fucking corporation are trying to close it down, man. And that's the missing the power. We shut up, power. Like we have to go against the corporation. The only thing we can do is to get people to sign our names. That's right. A petition. Yeah, get a book. Sign right. It, sign our names. Right. Good idea. We want to get a book. Good idea. Good for idea. The, for the home. Good idea, Dennis. All right. Yeah. Yeah, for people who are having a look. And let me ask you this. Well, now, don't ask about the reading no, the hospital. No, 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 I won't. What will happen if they do remove these seats? I'll tell you what will happen. I'd be still we'll scared. sit on the fucking ground, ground. won't we? <laughs> Which we're well used to. We set ourselves up as the Street People's Alliance and issued this press release to the Galway Observer, which was reported as follows. A motley crew of freedom-loving people, appearing under the guise of the Street Person Alliance, have begged for the right to continue begging. They have described as overreaction, bordering on hysteria, recent local media reports about the levels of harassment by so-called winos and crusties, especially in the High Street, Cross Street area of the city. And they say a recent story in the Galway Advertiser, which was headlined, Clear the Streets, was a rallying cry of every totalitarian regime. 
Says a statement from the Street Persons Alliance, the measures proposed by the business consortium are counter to the values enshrined in the Constitution. Rather than following the harsh measures of repression and restriction, why not set up street worker groups who will create liaison systems with every section of the community? It is surprising that such official groups as Simon Community, Galway Social Services, and even the Church appear to have failed remarkably in contributing anything constructive to this debate. Well, sometimes that place helps people to get off the drink. They set up now to, uh, they have probably heard of it, at the Hollicks and Rings. Yes. And some of them pulled so they get a flat, then after a while they lose the flat again on their back up there again. Yeah. Yeah. I think if there is a Latin Quarter in Galway, and certainly every Galwegian would maintain that there is a magnificent and hugely significant Latin Quarter in the city, then the centre, the landmark of the Latin Quarter in Galway has to be T. Nachten. That's where all the action happens, that's where all the traditional music happens, and it is a focal point. And the man at the hub of the whole thing is Jimmy Maguire. What happened about the seats outside? The corporation put seats, stone seats, outside the pub here. What happened about them? As I said, they, were, they had very, very short lives. They, uh, it, unfortunately, it, it, it tended to attract people who um, have no fixed board, etc. And a, uh, it developed into such a situation where there, a nuisance has been caused. So the corporation, in their wisdom, relocated the seats. With a little help from their friends. Well, it's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you were glad to see the seeds go, were you? I was delighted to see trees planted Absolutely. in their state. Let them stand, for goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> But you know what we're saying? They're still kicking the same people around, you know? They're, they're the kicking. poor people. Right. They're kicking. Now look at the fellas that's over there. That's right. Poppers. Nobody's bothering them. <laughs> no, there is not. No, no, no. No. For me. no. no one's bothered. Come sit here and look at them sitting down the path. That's right. That's right. Could I sit in the path? Oh, if you want three months in Limerick jail, yeah, you could. Thanks. No more drinking in the streets. That's it. <laughs> no more drinking for their customers anyway. Maybe this word drinking is a technicality. Well, we're drinking this not. As soon as there'll be no more walking in the street. We're out here drinking, they're locked in there. Anna, what do you think about this vagrancy problem will not be solved by putting more police on the street? It won't be solved by, by Guardi at all. It's not a problem in any way. It's not a problem, Anna. What do you mean? It's not a problem since people who have a free life in the streets are just making life more interesting. And the people that I meet in the streets, anyway, has a high spiritual uh, qualities. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. That woman is raising three children. Yeah. yeah. And how she knows, after a while, how the children carry on. That's right. It might be worse than any winder. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Could be worse than any alcoholic. Yeah, yes, right. I'll tell you. That's right. He can do, look at, never look frown on God's eyes. That's right. We're all born, but we're not dead. That's not right. Dead, we're still alive. We'll be today, God mm. tomorrow. Where do you come from? I'm from the Netherlands. And how is it in the Netherlands? How's the, <laughs> what's the situation like there in the same, you know, subject? People in the streets are pushed around because they do not want to be part of the system. Sorry. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Don't put that camera on, please. Sorry, sorry, Jimmy, sorry, man. We ain't talking to a person from the Netherlands, man. 
The Europeans and everyone belonged to you had money. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Number and one. had land and had everything. Everything. Oh, everything. Yeah. And to see you now, the Miss Warty came anew. That's right. Well, it could be in this. Yes, it could fall on them too, Bridget. And you like to pour blood. The Simon community did respond to the controversy in a letter to the editor of the Galway Advertiser on the 9th of July. The reality is that the so-called vagrants, winos and dropouts are in the main born and bred Galwegians who have reached their present situation by means of the same social system which has placed us all where we are today. The solution then has to be found in the same system unless we are to rely on the Gordi, the prison system to keep the so-called undesirable members of our population out of view. The alternative is increased activity by a wide variety of properly funded services guaranteeing a certain standard of living to all. This would ensure that young people growing up in Galway today do not become the winos, vagrants and dropouts of tomorrow as they also attempt to reject a society which they perceive as having rejected them. Noel Daly, Project Leader, Simon Community, 18C Road, Galway. The wind is gone. Everybody is down on Captain Winos. They're sitting there, they're calling them Winos. And behind it all, they're not Winos. I know, yeah. Sherio, 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 baby. They're gentlemen. I know that. I know that. And I had good drinks with them. You drink with them and you'll find out yourself what they're like. Yeah. Do your best. Bye bye. Now get that fucking So what do you think the recent thing is lately about the business people getting up in arms? I think the police are harassing us. I think the police. You think the police as well? I think they're harassing us. They're harassing us. Harassing us big time. They're harassing us for not. And why do you think they're doing that? Because it's only sense of reason. Because we're sitting on the seat. We're trying to enjoy this song. We're enjoying a drink. We're enjoying a drink. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to enjoy themselves. You've been six years in this town. Yeah. So you really don't know about. You don't know about the deprivation that we've been going through. You don't know what was happened to us. You don't know where we, we sleep out on the ground, whereas we get arrested for fucking things and things like that. Yeah. Where we're done for this and we're done for that. Everything we do is wrong. Yeah. Even if we do right, we're wrong. Right is wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, honestly... That came from the very beginning. You don't really know what, what, yeah. what we're doing in this town. Yeah. Six years, man. Look, I've, I'm 30 fucking years in this town. Yeah, yeah. And I've never been done right. I can't walk down the street with a girl, but I'm arrested just to do a prime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I can't, what about, just, like, I couldn't bring a girl to put pictures because for one simple reason. I'm very hard to picture. You don't want to see the laughings with a girl. Yeah. Because they're decent people. We are not. Yeah. We are under. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember when I was a kid. We're supposed to be un underprivileged, man. Yeah. Doctors. When you were a kid. I went through that when I was a kid. Yeah. I couldn't walk down the street with a girl. Yeah. But it's just. Stop up and arrest me. Just so, so I'd be taken into the police station and she could go home to her mother and yeah, father. Yeah, tape, one of did it now. They were prejudiced against you. I agree with yeah. that as well. Yeah, the family, the whole family. We were most like. Yeah. We were not. Ready? Yeah. 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 And well, you're telling me... The Irish are great, man. The, the Irish are great at looking, putting each other yeah. down, you know. Down, yeah. down. I mean, down. Yeah. The Galway wing of the Labour Party has slammed what it describes as the hysterical anti-homeless people campaign and claims that this has been generated by sections of the local press and certain business elements in the city. A hard-hitting statement issued this week by the Galway West Labour Party Constituency Council claims that recent local press reports and comments have amounted to outrageous attacks on those very people most in need. Uh, uh, quick draw, McGraw. Uh -huh. This is Jerry. Just a few weeks after the making of this film, this man was found dead in Air Square. He had died of exposure. He had been evicted from his flat by Galway Corporation. 
Only for all these lads now, I'd be really down with them. Yeah. Line, yeah. one thing I respect is kids. Yeah. I love kids. And, uh, tell me, have you any hope like that you'll get some kind of situation here or something like that? What hope? No, she has hope, she's actually. What hope? What hope? What is the hope? What is the hope that you have? Well, that, well, no. I, went, I went to corporate, so I've been about two, three years. Personally, I think her hope yeah. is this three years. years. Yeah. In yeah, yeah. You have your name down that long, have you? I'm in, I'm in Galway about three months, no. I said we about two, three years. No. Uh, so no. you're saying that's about the height of the hope you have now? About two, three years. Two, three years? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The law on this town. The law on this town is for one thing. Right? Yeah, right. For the rich. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The the rich. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
If you uh, say yeah, what was happening to you, on, yeah. If you were to tap me now, yeah, right. Just say it like that, yeah. Right. They think you're for aggressive, on the rest of it. You know what I mean? They think if you touch them wrong. at all, yeah, yeah. And what would you say if somebody said, "There's a lot of people in the streets of Galway who are aggressive to me on when they uh, beg for money"? Yeah, it's true. Are we, are we, are we but but uh, everyone is not the same, right? Everyone's got their own approach for tapping people on the streets. Yeah, and that's it. And so you're on. So don't blame everyone for you know their aggression. Right. Why well, come back and say here? Is there might aggressive? be one or two who are aggressive. There as might be saying. one or two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't come back and say here. And they bring aggressive. down the name for the others. No, they bring down the people. They bring down the people. Yeah. On July the 10th, the City Tribune reported and quoted from our press release. The statement claimed that innocent people were being punished for the unsocial activities of a small minority and went on to say that their organization objected to individuals harassing people for money or any other reason. The Alliance said that proposals to ban drinking on the streets and a recent incident in which buskers were arrested and charged with begging were infringements against the freedom of the individual. Itinerant performers and musicians have always been a culturally revered group in our nation. Under the conditions required by the business delegation, Particle Conyra would be arrested, and so would Raftery and Philly. Tuesday, the 30th of June, the seats have just been removed. A photographer from the City Tribune is present, along with a reporter a prominent Fine Gael politician, two plainclothes detectives, and one unidentified person. What are these men doing on the street corner? I mean, let's talk about Ireland generally, you know, going off the subject a bit. I mean, I have been stopped quite a bit busking recently, and I find that quite disturbing, because I thought this is a country where the beds came, or the bars, whatever you want to call them, yeah. you know, but uh, kind of, I think that, that's going out the window a bit, you know. Yeah. Oh, the poets and, uh, and bards are no longer respected people, they're just bums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. the bums. Get us out of the streets, we don't belong here. But I think if you walk through Galway, you'll often find that there are tremendous numbers, especially in the middle of the season. This is Councillor Angela Lupton, one of the main supporters of the new city bylaws. Recently, Councillor Lupton called for the reintroduction of flogging for what she calls habitual offenders. With the busking is the fact that uh, they are taking up quite an amount of space on footpaths. This may not happen perhaps with one busker because they're quite niche where they are. But sometimes you have groups in place and they take quite an amount of the space of the narrow path. And I have watched and I have seen young uh, women with their fans getting on the path but worse still, I have seen old people having to step off the path onto the road. Now, I think when it gets to a dangerous situation, it's time to speak out. Well, what, what's your recommendation in a nutshell? My recommendation is that we might consider doing as they're doing in some places on the continent, and that is uh, applying a situation where buskers would come to City Hall each day and apply for a licence, and that we would have set areas in the city which we know that the people of the city would accept. For instance, the shopkeepers themselves, some of them have said they find that when they're trying to sell their goods that the noise from busking outside is not very helpful. So I think if we got the shopkeepers together, uh, with perhaps some of the people from uh, the art situation who would understand this, and decided on set areas in the city, and perhaps that would include, or include the centre city all right, but that you would only al allow a busker here and a busker at another distance. And perhaps at different times in the day, you'd, you'd have it here one time, but that these people would move on to another place. They, they don't know where the best spots are to bus in the day, you know. 
it's all about coming down whenever you, you want to, or, you know. It's not about, it's not a job in a sense, you know. It's good because there's the freedom there to come along and play whenever you want, you know. In Derry, is there a law against busking? Or That's right. In Derry, is there a permit needed for busking? No, I never see anyone busking, you know, that's the funny thing about it. Yeah. I never have. Occasionally, you know, but there's special times, but they don't use it, not like Galway, you know. Yeah. Or Dublin, you know. Yeah. You do you like it anyway? I mean, oh, you, I love it. Uh, you don't think it should be regulated or controlled? No. Let them off. Let them off. Let it all. Let it all happen. Let it all happen. I have a bus sometimes to survive. And I had uh, children, a child with me at a time, Yeah, and um, they come over and say I can't busk and I say well I have to busk to survive and they say well it's begging, you're not allowed to beg. So I said to the policeman... What did I um, tell you about keeping the camera no on the person problem, who's talking? Listen. I said to the, to the policeman, I, I work, he said who do you, what are you working at or something like that. I said I work for Jesus, he goes I don't give a fuck about Jesus. And I said well that's the problem. Yeah, the policeman said, said this. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, well, how do you know justice if you don't know your Bible and you don't know about Jesus and you don't care about justice, you know what I mean? Did they say anything? Did they tell you what you must... Yeah, they said, I'm a guarder. What? I'm a guarder and that's it. That's as far as it goes. And uh, if you don't get off the streets, we're going to arrest you and put you inside. So can you go back on the streets again? Not busking. No. <laughs> Known your years of busking that you have had any major problems with shopkeepers and that kind of thing. No. So no. you you don't see any reason why there should be a law then saying when you should busk and where you should busk. I don't think it's right that any law should stop any human. We get moved on because we, we attract so many people, you know. Have you done that? Well, we yes. cover a street, a street fills up with people, you know. Yeah, and, and so they call it obstructing the, traffic. The, yeah, and the, the shops yeah. are paying rates and things, and we are, right. you know, so they get a bit more deeper. Well, well, have you ever bought somewhere where you need a permit? Um, not that we know of, no. What do you think of the idea of busking? Shouldn't have to do that. Shouldn't have to do that. I don't believe so much in street art. Cover the art. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And the other day I was far, well, you just wouldn't allow me in, basically because of my appearance, which is pathetic really, you know. Another offensive one. Well, yeah, that's it, you know what I mean? So tell us what happened on the, um, was it a Sunday evening when you went up to Satantis? Yeah, it was. It, it, um, everyone that um, was working for Mockness that day, and I was one of the drummers in Mockness, um, got a free ticket to go to a gig at Satanta as sort of a kind of payment by kind, you know? Yeah. And uh, I went there and Speedy just said that because I was an itinerant and stuff, I wasn't allowed to stay in there. What did he actually say to you? He actually said that, uh, uh, that he, he had been had reports of us like um, causing trouble in Monroe's and stuff, and it's total lies, it's total fabrication. I've never sort of like even been pissed in Monroe's, I never even got drunk in there hardly, you know, let alone causing trouble and stuff in there. But nonetheless, the, the way I look and everything, I'm sure, I'm sure it's to do with that, you know, he's just prejudiced and it's like. Did he use any words like, did he say you lost or something? Please. Huh? Did he say you lost or what? Yeah, you lot, tiring everyone with the same brush. It was that way. He called us new line types and Stonehenge people like in the newspaper. He was quoting it in yeah. the newspaper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So was there anybody with you when you got... Were you actually asked Just to my leave? friends, just my friends were there and I was actually asked to leave, yeah. Just my friends and they all were totally disgusted and we left anyway because we just didn't want to spend our money in there, you know? Like, yeah. Basically, yeah. if you're looking anywhere alternative or if you're doing anything alternative that might be in some way counterculture to what they stand for. But the ironic thing is that what they say they stand for is also the counterculture. You know? So that's where it's, they depend actually on, on artists and unusual performers and things like that. That's that's where it all started. But now it's got safe and they've made their money. So now screen out. Concrete and stuff is getting dumped on us. Yeah. Like five tons of concrete slurry dumped around us. By who? Dempsey. Ooh. Guy got it the quarries at Menlo. Yeah. Come down with about five lorry loads. And they were. Dumped they were, it all around the car runs, dumped it on me. Dumped it on you? Yeah, when the stops, you know, because he's like dropping it in front of the car run, so when they had to the stop, they just let it off on top of me, like. <laughs> <laughs> and were they doing anything with the quarry? No, they're not doing nothing, like, you know, it's, it's a common land. It's common, it's like it's on the lake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one's the people. Well, nobody has missed the written on their gravestone anyway. Ah, uh, look at it. Don't worry about them. Ah, uh, sure you have to be. No, you have to, no, you have to not worry. I seen the bakers there. Yes. And that one was as decent as could right. be. Griffins, was it? Right. If you see children there, That's right. she gave them a whole loaf of bread and, right. and give them give to them the children. Up. And Miss, and Miss McGuire, she was nice. What, the mother of him? Yeah. yeah. Right. Street violence. This is Miles Murphy of Galway Social Services. But I think the solutions that they talk about, uh, banning drink on, on the streets and licensing buskers and, and so on, I think some of that's uh, intrusion on, on civil liberties. I think they're obviously reacting to, to the problems that they may be experiencing, but I think they're doing it probably the wrong way. Well, they're changing the atmosphere all right, doesn't it? The atmosphere it? is finished. Yeah. And when the atmosphere is gone, it's, it's finished. Yeah. It's the same in the pub when the atmosphere is gone. Yeah. If there's no atmosphere in the pub, you might as well go with it. Yeah. That's right. If there's no atmosphere, there's no atmosphere. It's the same on the other place. The atmosphere that really counts. Yeah. Yeah, all time. But you know the atmosphere for the able to this stuff? What's that? Show us again. Counts and the police want it, but it's saying. Yeah. What they want is everybody indoors. They don't want anybody ever to go outdoors. They want shopping centre with flats so that you live indoors, you come out, you go to the shop and you go back indoors again. They want your number on your door, number in your pocket. They want to know where you are. They don't want you to, they don't want you to travel. A man is a nomad, man is a traveller. Everybody know that. The, the original man, natural man is a traveller. But the Babylon, you see, is, is, a, is, is, is a natural progression. That's the opposite. That's technology, which is messing up humanity, isn't it? And so all that comes with that is off the streets, indoors, out your shop, out your door, into the shop, back in again, video, telly. You want to see nature? See it on your video. Hey, video. Would you put up with an Bali permit? Well, yes, we do have an Bali permit. Yeah. You have what? Yeah. People drinking on the streets. Uh, and how do you people? Begging. What do you think of that? Well, it's just you get used to it. Does it annoy you? No, no, it not doesn't. No. Genuinely, no. no. Yeah. You're always free to say no. Isn't oh, exactly. Right. You're yeah. your right to say no. You yeah. yeah. haven't got it. That's yeah. Right. Now there are problems in this town, but you cannot emphasize problems that are of a minor issue. You take, for instance, the 
problems of serving underage people drink. Done in this town all the time. Take, for instance, the problem after hours drinking, where there are licensing laws which say a certain thing, and then there are privileged people who can keep on serving drink all night. So what this is about is selective persecution. The authorities tend to select those who are weakest in the society. Now that is not to say the thing I think is that the authorities are uh, guilty by default. They just don't know. But as we were talking, you and I today about is there a way of educating the authorities or is there not? I tend to think there isn't, because I think they're too entrenched in what they're talking about. If the Garda Shukarna said, you cannot drink on the street, we have to walk the streets 24 hours a day. And so if they stop that, what else can we do? Yeah, yeah. We've nowhere else to go to. This is what's keeping us away. We don't eat, we just drink, because we can't get any food. Yeah. And we have to keep moving along. Yeah. I fell by the wayside. You had different jobs, different skills. I'm classified as a chief engineer in the merchant navy. Yeah. Fell by the wayside. Just started drinking. Yeah. yeah. Galway is now a two-tiered city. From here we see the top tier. The one promoted by the traders of the city whose concern is so clearly to attract consumers and maintain a so-called respectable image. The tragedy is that human values are being undermined in this drive for economic success. People such as those seen in this video are not market viable and as such are not deemed worthy of our genuine concern, our understanding. <laughs> this is social schizophrenia. The problems these people have to endure are not being addressed. More problems arise as a result. The top tier blindly carries on as if nothing was needed except a clearing of the streets by increased law and order. The bottom tier suffers the consequences of this viewpoint. In April of 1994, Ireland's Minister for Justice, Maura Gagan Quinn, introduced the new Public Order Bill, which gives any police officer the authority to make a personal estimation as to whether a person's or group's behaviour constitutes a threat to the public peace and order. The Garda can further arrest and charge persons if they fail to disperse. The Irish Council for Civil Liberties has described the legislation as a grave erosion of civil rights and contends that increased Garda intervention in local communities will result in large-scale public unrest and disorder. The importance of this video that will make something somehow, somewhere that other people shall realise what street people are. What street people are. The best in the world. And you think it's important that your voice should be heard, yeah? Yeah, kind of. I do. Has anybody ever asked you before? Before we did? No, I know. No. Like no. So they just bypass you like? Bypass me like a dog. Right. Even though you know the problem better than anybody. I do you feel that you've had your say? On no, this video, have you had your say? My say is what I want every street man under the sun. I've often versed this and said it here. To go into one place and one home, which will never work. But they'll all end up fucking fighting kill nature. <laughs> But the one mistake when they build that place, they should have built a dry house and a wet house. What do you mean All by that? 
But they say if you're drinking, throw you to one house, into the wet house, if you're at the Holland house. And then in the dry house, they them in the dry house. But either way, I ain't putting it all, they're all at the Holland house. How would a wet stop. house work, Denny? It work out when? How would it work? Everyone drunk. <coughs> all right. We say you're on the dry, you can go into that dry house. And if you're on the drink, have some kind of an old shelly at the back. That's the biggest mistake when they built that place. They should have built two places. Built two places? Yeah. There's plenty of room around that car park. Yeah, yeah. We are a housing, a housing centre, and we will help people to resettle into housing. If there were other kinds of problems that need addressing, we would hope to refer them to relevant agencies. Yeah. The problem is that relevant agencies don't exist. It's very, very easy. To make a bag, I bet. I right. It takes a hell of a lot of fucking action. It takes a hell of a lot more action and effort. Right? Okay. These men are not crime problems. They are health problems. They ought to be able to seek out and should be offered treatment. Homelessness is just one side of their story, but the disease of alcoholism is the root cause of nearly all of their difficulties. Almost every one of these men has been in prison for petty offences created by the new Public Order Act. By the terms of our constitution, we are a Christian nation. Surely then, our attitude to these problems should be humane and compassionate. The methods used by the authorities, imprisonment, condemnation, and community apathy, are the very opposite to the Christian virtue of cherishing all people equally. Where do you stay now, Jimmy? Very bad. Very bad. Do you have a house? Of course I have a house. Yeah. How would you like being described as a vagrant? Why me? Why me? What's the old year, Sam? I guess, sir. We the people. We'll keep the water living. When I'm moving on the hoop that I'm 55 years of age you now. Mm -hmm. There's a big change since the last time I was taught to you mm -hmm. on the video. Mm -hmm. But it, a lot of it's for the better now. Mm -hmm. I'm not drinking, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm getting grey head from other people. You know? You're getting what? Grey head from other people. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're, they're more care for me now than I, than I ever was. Drinking is a ha drinking is an awful thing for anyone, especially if you're homeless. You're drinking yourself to death. You have nothing to look forward. To. Do you know what I mean? One night you could have a bed, and another night you could be out. You don't know what's going to happen. But when you're sober, you can realise you can do something with your drink pop. Do you know? You can stay healthy and wise. That's what it's all about. You you cop on it. You cop on an awful lot when you're sober. And if I think if Simon can uh, look into a lot to be able to get some kind of project work, I was talking about making flags for the All Island. It doesn't matter if you made so many flags, like Garba colours, the Mayo colours, so, you know, for each match, and send them then, you're going to make money. I could do a couple hours here every day, I make flags, it doesn't matter what colours, and could sell them then, and, they could eventually end up having a little shop, the know, selling like the travelling people had years ago down in the fair green, selling flags and colours. That's how they're going to make money. We won't get nothing sitting on our arse. And that's a good idea. Well, Tommy, it used to be cognac or brandy in the morning. What is it now? Tea. How long now? Six years. Six years off the drink? Six years off the drink now, yeah. 
And how do you feel? Good. I see life different. Because of? Because of th that I'm sober, like I see in a sober manner now. Like, before I see it uh, in a, a pure negative kind of manner, like, you know? Because of the booze, like, you know? New way of life and new way of living. You have a flat now? You wouldn't see me here at a cappuccino would be a bottle of wine in my hand or something. You have a flat now? Uh, I have a flat now, a place of my own now, yeah. Ah, I get the head button down the line, yeah. My muffin and them do me head. Gobby Social Services. Gobby Social Services. That, uh, Simon. Simon. Things like that, you know. I get a good boost, you know, from them. I get a good kick here. I do a bit of vision to the, to, 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 there to some of the homeless, like, you know. What do you do? I, 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 I do a bit of vision to some of the homeless, like, you know. Because I, I, I was that way myself, like, you know. I, do, I don't forget where I came from. But, you know, I have to I have, I have to understand them as well as myself, you know. And they know that you know. They know that I know what they're going through, like, you know. I've been there and back again, like, you know. What would you say is the main advice you give them? Or help? Or? Well, the main help is to uh, try and... Um, well, if they're bad enough, I, uh, I believe they should, they should get hospitalised for a while, you know. I could do them good, you know, for, for a period of time. And, uh, at the end of my drinking, uh, the hospital I had to come into it, like, yeah, I had to, yeah, or else I would be dead, you know. So here you are with beautiful friends and... Beautiful women around me. And life is good? Life is good, man. The day that this town loses contact with this person and persons like him, that's the day that it's doomed. And it's very nearly doomed now, actually. You're the last man standing. Abby is dead. Pat's dead. Jerry's dead. Sean the Gypsy's dead. I could go on and Corrigan Gilmartin is dead. John Laffey is dead. Frankie Barrett is dead. I could go on all day about the people who are dead. Johnny Mongan is dead. Tommy Mongan. Johnny Mongan is dead. Tommy Mongan is dead. Michael Mongan is dead. Babby Stevens is dead. Sean Stevens is dead. John Mortimer. Stevens is dead. So like all men under 55. All men well under 55. Well, you see, as much as anything that contributed to these men's death was the wall of intolerance they met in this town. Oh, that's great. Do you think that caused them to drink more and more? Well, it may not have caused, it caused them to drink more, but it caused them to care less about a condition called that careless life, care less. human existence. It led them to care less, and therefore, as John says, become careless. Well, listen to me. You know, it led them to sleep under walls that fell down on top of them. It led them to sleep in Bowling Green in the old slaughterhouse place and get murdered because they became careless. That's very good, John, actually. Mark, Mark, how do you feel since you give up drinking? Oh, I feel very much better. Yeah. Well, I had a nice little anecdote, right? I met this guard who used to arrest me at every opportunity, right? He used to arrest me for things the likes of him did, not me. And I met him the other day and I hadn't seen him for about 10 years, right? And he walked up to me and said, Mark, I said, yeah, that's right. He said, my God, he said, I wouldn't know you. He said, you finally saw the light. I said, no, my friend, I finally saw the darkness and I fled from it.
bring me in and feed me shipwrecks hold me close if you can you can't cast me out I already did that I may be patrons no less a man I've had enough of your pollution I've had enough indifference I'm sick to death of your hypocrisy and I've had my fill of your ignorance so blow away you mean old bastards try and shift me from my town Ease your gales All your sou'esters It takes a wind Greater than you To blow me down It takes a wind Harder than you To knock me to the ground It takes a wind Greater than you To blow me down Homeless people are people are special to God.